This noon, we are hearing from border mayors as Title 42 ends tomorrow night. The pandemic policy that turned away more than 2 million migrants over the last three years now has tens of thousands headed for the Mexican border to cross into the states seeking help. Over the counter birth control and FDA panel giving the green light to let women buy birth control without a prescription. We're tracking the very latest on this big decision and cleaning up the zone. Phoenix crews are downtown as we speak, starting the street sweeps, clearing out hundreds of tents and people living there, telling them they have to move into a shelter or go someplace else. That's where we begin this noon. The city is court ordered to clear that massive homeless encampment by the summer. It is a massive undertaking with many of the people living there refusing shelter services. Let's check it now with Kylie Cruz inside the zone. The city is working block by block. The first one they are tackling is here. This is 9th Avenue between Washington and Jefferson. They have been out here since about 7 o'clock this morning. I'm told dozens of people are here from different agencies working with the folks who call the zone home. The goal, talk to them about going to a shelter and give them resources so they can move off the streets. So for this particular block, the city tells me that there are enough shelter beds available for everyone who has to move from here today. But there's not enough beds for the roughly 750 people currently living at the zone. That's why Scott Hall, the city's deputy director of Homeless Solutions, says they have to do this in phases, going block by block, depending on the space they have available in different shelters. 800 shelter beds will be added between now and 2024, so that'll help, but they're not ready currently. We asked Scott about the approach they use when talking to people living here and what the reaction's been like so far. It's mixed. You know, sometimes if people are way open to the conversation, sometimes they're hesitant to it. But that's why we continue to engage or sometimes we switch who talks to the individual. But a lot of times we get right through. You know, we have a lot of people out here doing the service who have lived experience, who've been there themselves that really reduce that barrier and open up that conversation. So far, Scott tells me 29 people who were living on this particular block have agreed to stay at a shelter now, but there is a concern that some don't want to go to a shelter and will end up living on the street somewhere else. Hall wouldn't say how long it'll take to clean the entire area known as the zone, but again, it's all happening in phases. The first phase going on behind me, people won't be able to camp on 9th Avenue between Jefferson and Washington anymore. And then in a couple of weeks, they'll move to another block and do the same thing. Back to you. Kylie, thank you. Phoenix Fire arson investigators just arrested a man they say is tied to setting at least five separate fires. Crews caught him this morning shortly after a fire in a three-story building in downtown Phoenix. Skippy Parra has the latest from the scene. Yeah, the Phoenix Fire Department, along with the Phoenix Police Department, had a, a busy morning having to take a man into custody who they believe set multiple fires. Now, according to the Phoenix Police Department, this man you see here, who they took into custody early this morning, uh, was responsible for setting multiple fires. Now, many of them, we hear there were at least five, but many of them put themselves out. The Phoenix Fire Department were actually only called out to one, and that's this warehouse fire you see here. We got here moments after the fire started early this morning, and fire crews had to attack this fire, which, uh, as you can see from the video, had fire in Inside the dumpster that palm tree was caught on fire there and it extended into the warehouse and the contents that were right next to the building there fire crews actually knocked it down right away but then had to go inside the building to make sure that it did not get into attic space and it did not become a bigger problem the good news out of this was that uh, no firefighters were hurt in this and we have no reports of anybody else uh, being hurt we did see the person who was arrested as you saw when he was getting taken away from the paramedics uh, that he was injured. We understand he had a razor, and that's something the Phoenix Police Department had to deal with. But uh, for now, all fires have been put out. As I mentioned, no one hurt, and that man is now in custody. Well, a man is in critical condition at last check after getting shot by Tempe police. Detectives say he was shoplifting from a Walmart near Priest and Elliott last night when officers tried stopping him on a nearby canal path. They got into a scuffle and he was found with a sharp weapon. The officer, a 20 year veteran of the force, shot him. No one else got hurt. We're waiting to learn more on what exactly happened and get a look at the police body cam footage. On the border watch this noon, this is how it looks at the Mexican border. Officials in Arizona's southern communities are already seeing 
a surge of migrants lining up ahead of Title 42 being lifted tomorrow. Border Patrol was allowed to expel migrants immediately for the last three years because of COVID, and now there is a push in urgency for many seeking a better life to come stateside for asylum now. Governor Hobbs is asking the Biden administration for more help. The sheriff in Cochise County says the feds are actually shipping migrants to Arizona from Texas because ports there are being overrun. But this is how it looks here. We talked today with the Yuma mayor, Doug Nichols, about his efforts to prepare for what's to come. We're preparing by advocating. I guess earlier this week I was with the governor talking about uh, resources that we, we could need, we might need, how, how that could play out. Uh, we've done the same thing with our federal partners and then locally we've just been coordinating and looking at options because frankly the the size of this and the duration is unknown and it's very difficult to plan anything uh, with those kind of parameters. Sky Harbor, by the way, confirms they're seeing about 200 migrants at the airport each day. They've been given tickets to fly out of state. Yuma County Supervisor Jonathan Line says that he's uh, as much as the surge of migrants we're seeing will be difficult to handle. Those who cross the border legally aren't the problem. The people that we are worried about are the people who try to evade law enforcement. So they come here with uh, perhaps uh, an ulterior motive, you know, the human trafficking is on a rise as well as the narcotics in this area and fentanyl is at an all time high c crossing the border. Well, we have crews covering every angle of this developing story. We have a crew talking with nonprofits, helping migrants get out of town. We also have another crew at the border right now. They're standing by to give us a first hand look at what's happening. They will be there the rest of the week. You can watch for the live report starting on Good Evening Arizona at four today. We'll link all their reports on our news app and website, azfamily.com. Let's talk about the weather because we're seeing some uh, cool down out there. And yeah. I got some sprinkles yeah. in East Mesa this morning, April. I have heard from folks both on the east side of town and the yes. west side of town that they saw light rain this Just morning. very light. Very, very light. Yep. But it's exciting nonetheless, mm -hmm. especially when it happens one of our dry in one of our typically driest months of the year around here. And that's what May is. Oh, we got a live look outside right now. Current temperature is 73 degrees. It's still fairly dry. I would be shocked to see more than a few sprinkles with this drive and air mass. Winds out of the west southwest at 90 Nine miles per hour. Here's a look at our radar right now. Your first alert radar showing some scattered rain showers in mainly northern Arizona. Some very high elevation snow there in the White Mountains as well. These showers lifting to the north right now. Nothing really close to the valley, but you'll probably see some of those clouds out there, especially when you look off to the north and northeast. So what's ahead for the rest of the afternoon? We're going to warm to the low 80s today under partly cloudy skies, and we're going to stay breezy. It's been off and on breezy throughout the morning hours, and that will continue this afternoon with winds that peak at about 10 to 20 miles per hour. Uh, this is a nice cool high for uh, mid-May in Phoenix. It's not going to last long. We'll show you the warm-up I'm tracking for your weekend coming up. Thank you, April. This just in, the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, just as we speak, voted to ban TikTok from all county devices. And it comes after Governor Hobbs' executive order banning the popular app from all state devices. President Biden has threatened to ban TikTok across America unless the social media company's Chinese owners divest their stakes in it for fears of compromising consumer data and access with the Chinese government. Well, this, at the state capitol right now, lawmakers are a step closer to passing the next year's budget. The Senate already approved the $18 billion proposal. It's now headed to the House. It would increase funds for affordable housing, K-12 schools and transportation, and fellow Democrats were not too happy about expenditures for school vouchers. If this passes in the House, it will go to the governor's desk. Count on us to keep you posted. Still a stalemate on the debt ceiling limit in D.C. President Biden's 60-minute sit-down with top congressional leaders uh, fell flat without any compromise. House Republicans say we need to agree to rein in spending before any agreements to raise the debt ceiling. The White House says those are budget negotiations and the spending cap should be lifted without any restrictions. By not taking default off the table, Speaker McCarthy is greatly endangering America and making it much harder to make progress on budget negotiations. This is a political game they're trying to play instead of sit down and really negotiate.
Fox resumed Friday. The clock is ticking with the Treasury Secretary saying we could default as early as June 1st. If that happens, it will spiral us into an economic collapse, compromising millions of jobs. President Biden's personal finances being called into question today. The Republican chair of the House Oversight Committee is accusing the president's family of engaging in pay to play influence opportunities with foreign nationals. Well, the House investigation panels digging into Biden's family finances, saying they have bank records outlining questionable family business deals. The White House is questioning the legitimacy of those documents. Potentially huge news for women's access to birth control, an FDA panel advising today that it be cleared for sale without a prescription. This doesn't mean the O-pill will go direct to over-the-counter sales. The FDA will have to vote on the panel's recommendations. You can count on us to keep you posted of what comes of that vote, which is expected to happen this summer. New York Congressman George Santos out on a half-million-dollar bond today after pleading not guilty to 13 federal charges, including fraud, money laundering, and theft of public funds. The Republican congressman surrendered to authorities this morning, accused, among other things, of embezzling campaign contributions, lying to Congress, and cashing in on unemployment while he had a job and was, in fact, running for Congress. Potentially decades in federal prison. I don't know that it would be that long. But if you look at the indictment here, they ha it looks like they have the receipts. Santos absent from House floor voting last night. Speaker Kevin McCarthy suggesting support for the freshman congressman is limited if he is found guilty.